And what we've seen in the other persecutions against Donald Trump, they absolutely had to violate those basic tenets in order to go after him. It is absolutely an egregious violation of the law. It is a level of constitutional uh, malpractice, the likes of which I've never seen. And Ambassador Eisen, I think that if you were being honest, you would agree with that. We really want someone getting up and being able to say, 25 years ago, I was attacked in a, in a dress room. I have no evidence, can't tell you anything about it, don't even know what day of the week it was, don't know what month, don't know what year, but for goodness sakes, we know what happened. So we have the state of New York, and they come in and they pass a law saying, well, we're not gonna have a statute of limitations for this particular crime or this particular individual. Wouldn't that be considered a violation of this gentleman's due process rights? Yeah, I mean, I think it's part of the overall context, which again kind of shows the political motivation, the uniqueness of this case. I mean, uh, uh, Ambassador Eisen talks about the 10,000 cases. Well, I've read most of those cases too. None of them approach the uniqueness of this right. case and this the obfuscation of the theory here. Uh, for example, usually the underlying offense uh, that is intended to be committed is grand larceny, grand larceny, grand larceny, insurance fraud, things like that. Very straightforward facts. Um, but by making the underlying offense here federal uh, New York election law, which itself required proof of unlawful means, which then hinged upon FICA, tax laws, falsification, business records, it just got more and more and more unclear and exactly what Mr. Trump was being charged with. So all of these facts suggest that there is a shocks the conscience due process uh, violation here, in addition to the notice problems I've pointed well, out. Well, and I think that there's the due process issue, but Mr. Bailey, let's turn to you and let's talk about the equal protection aspect of it. As you've just described, Ms. Foley, this is one case against one man for one purpose. And in fact, the governor of the state of New York has said it. Look, everybody, don't worry. Don't worry. We're not coming after you for these kinds of fraud claims. We're just going after Donald Trump. Isn't that the antithesis the antithesis of the foundation of our Constitution that is based upon equal protection and the equal application of the law. Have you ever seen anything like what they have done to Donald Trump in their effort to destroy who they perceive to be their political enemy, Mr. Bailey? I have never seen such an egregious assault upon the tenets of equal protection as uh, when government officials in the state of New York claim that they are specifically targeting one individual and will not use the same laws against anyone else. But I wanna go back to the due process issue briefly because everything that's being said here is further amplified by the fact that section 175.10 of the Code of State of New York, which forms the basis of the 34 charges, has an affirmative defense that requires the defendant to get a preponderance of the evidence. How can he go get his evidence if you bring the claims late? Statute of limitations are intended to prevent sandbagging of claims. That's exactly right. And in this particular circumstance and what we've seen in the other persecutions against Donald Trump, they absolutely had to violate those basic tenets in order to go after him. It is absolutely an egregious violation of the law. It is a level of constitutional uh, malpractice, the likes of which I've never seen. And Ambassador Eisen, I think that if you were being honest, you would agree with that.